everybody. In this video, I will show you how to read JSON data from a live interface and then load that data into our table, or you could save it into a file. Um, this process can be done uh, for um, uh, XML data too. So it has like few steps. I, I wrote it down the steps. So first steps we have to do, we have to create a Swagger file. Um, let's create that Swagger file first. Okay, in order to create Swagger file, I have to go to the administrator tab. So this is my administrator tab, right? So over here is the Swagger. I click that one and then click new and give a meaningful name. I'm going to say book. Uh, runtime environment will be my uh, secure agent and URL address would be this one. So over here, I'm going to change this part actually. I'm going to change this part and I'm going to put it over here. And then there should be no username and password because this is a free service by someone. So they don't require any username and password. But if you have username and password to access this information, then you can put those information here. Uh, this one doesn't have any token or token secret, so I'm not going to give anything here. But if you have those information, uh, then uh, definitely you're going to put those information here. And then scroll down. And then over here, you have to give an operation ID. So mine is, I'm going to put just books. One, two, three, four, five. This is a random number. I'm just putting it here. Now, you don't have to do anything here. JSON response file, nothing. You don't have to do anything here. So just fill out those information and hit save. So my Swagger file is created. So let's take a look at the next step. So down, next step is download this Swagger file into a folder. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to download this. Download. It's already downloaded here. So I'm going to place it in a different folder. Okay, copy. I'm going to save it over here. Yes. So this is my Swagger file now here. So now let's go to the next step. So next step is create a REST V2 connector for this particular API. If you don't have the REST V2 connector, you could download it from IICS. So let's go to the IICS again. Now, I already created the connection, but I'm going to show you add on connection, go to the add on connection and type REST V2, REST V2. See over here, you see the REST V2. Over this one, you see this start free tile. Since I already download this one, so there is no start free tile for me. So that means it's already there for me. So now go to the connection. Um, I have to create a new connection. I'm going to give book rest v2 connection. Just rest v2, that's all. Okay, and then you're going to choose here REST v2. So runtime environment, you're going to choose your local environment. Authentication, you're going to choose standard. But if you if you have a different authentication system, then you're going to choose one of these. But for me, it's standard. OK, now authentication ID is actually it's nothing because I'm using standard. So over here, scroll down. OK, so now you have to give Swagger file path. So what is the Swagger file? This, this is the Swagger file. This is the Swagger file. So click, right click, uh, copy as path. So over here, just paste it. Now it has a double code included. So I'm going to delete that part. At the beginning, also double code. I'm going to remove that one too. So now I'm going to see if everything works. Connection was successful. So now you can just hit save. All right. So you already created this V2 connection. Now let's go to that next step. So we already created the part three, step three. Now we're going to go to the step four. In the newly created V2 connector, add the Swagger file. We already did this part. Now step five, create a text file which will have API web address. Okay, let's do this. Uh, file, new tab. Okay, so let's see. Okay, we're going to have port and then we're going to have that, not this one actually, not this. Copy, link, copy the link and over here, just paste it. 
Okay, so you don't need the full link. You could you could just this much is good enough. So hit save. Now you have to save it somewhere. Save it. So I'm gonna save it to go to the CSV. I have created a folder. Uh, let me see the folder. Web service folder. I've created a web service folder. So I'm gonna just paste it over here. So I have to give a name actually. Uh, book connection. Okay. And hit save. That's it. So after this, now I have done this one too. Now you have to go to the step six. Create a component called business service and add this res v2 connector. I just created. Okay. So let's do this then. Um, now I'm going to go my data integration. I'm going to click new and just hit components. Now I have to create business service here. So click business service. So I'm going to give a meaningful name, business service book. Okay. Now connection. Remember we created a connection. That's this connection. Okay. Uh, select operation. You have to hit this one, select operation. Select which operation. Remember we created the book one, two, three, five. This is the operation we want. Okay, click okay. Okay, see over here is right there now. Now you have to hit save. Okay, so this is done. So we did everything here now. Now I'm gonna go to the new again. Now I'm gonna go mapping. I have to create a new mapping, create mapping. You should give a meaningful name. Um, source. Uh, my source is it's a folder, uh, CSV folder, and single object. And my object is I'm going to choose web service. Click web service. And remember, I created a book connection. That's the one I'm going to choose web service. Okay. Now, if you want, you can do the preview data. Okay, done. Okay, now you go here. Now you need a transformation. So you're going to use web service transformation. What is it? Okay, the web service transformation. Now click on the web service. So your web service is what? Remember, we, we created a web service. This is the one we created. So select that one. Remember the operation book one, two, three, five. Okay, now incoming field. My incoming field is port, right? So request mapping. This port will go over that side. Okay, now response mapping. Over here, you're going to click this one. Map all descendants. Okay, so now there are like, uh, each of them is a like object. Each of them is object. So one is fall group object, response object. Other one is the root object. So for me, mine is going to be response object 200. This is the one I'm, 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 I want to get. So response object 200. So over here, I'm going to click and over here. And then I'm going to choose only response object. If you want to get those two, other two, then you can create another target, another two more targets, and then you can do choose those two too. But I don't need it. And then let me look at the uh, incoming field. Go to the target, incoming field. Let's see. This is ID, name, port, type. Okay. So now uh, let's go to the... Now I'm going to choose this one, uh, source. I'm going to choose this one, OK? It's Oracle object. And I'm going to select. Uh, actually, I'm going to create a new uh, table in runtime. I'm going to say uh, JSON book. My table name will be JSON book because I'm inserting JSON object here. All right. so. Field mapping is nothing because I'm. It's gonna be done automatically for me. So now hit save. Hit run. Next. And then you can hit run. Let's see if it works. Yep, that is populated properly. So thank you very much for watching the video. Bye.